Good morning. I was just remembering that I was at an event that Michael hosted uh, under a different company banner here a decade ago. So nice to be back with you in Palm Springs. Um, as, uh, as Michael said, I'm here to talk to you about transforming our workplaces into um, healthy and productive spaces by building a culture of health uh, and working through a combination of design-related interventions to the building um, and organizational interventions through programs, policies, amenities, and benefits. My organization, the International Well Building Institute, is a for benefit organization that is based uh, in New York City, headquartered in New York City with offices all over the world. And typically, when I'm trying to do a fast track to explain what well is, I ask the question, how many of you have heard of LEAD? But I think in this audience, I should probably ask, how many of you haven't heard of LEAD? <laughs> OK, then we can skip right past that part of my presentation. And I will say that, like LEAD, WELL is a voluntary third-party certification uh, that aims at market transformation. And I think both uh, products have, at their very core, um, this notion of the triple bottom line. And I think the wisdom of the triple bottom line really suggests that if we shoot for that intersection of what's great for the planet, what's great for people, and what's great for the business's bottom line, that we can't really go wrong. And so whereas LEAD would come at that from the perspective, first and foremost, of planetary health, the center of gravity for our work at IWBI is human health. So our core product is known as the Well Building Standard. We also have a product for communities. And toward the end of my presentation, I'll talk to you a little bit more about our portfolio program, where organizations are applying well strategies across all of their assets through an incremental approach. So well, really, at its heart, is looking at outcomes to the built environment and within organizations that can be transformative for human health and productivity. So whereas green building might look at water efficiency, well looks at water quality. Where uh, green building might, for instance, see daylighting primarily through an efficiency lens, we take a scientific approach to looking at daylight and its impact on human health, its ability to regulate sleep cycles, improve mood, improve focus. And I think in a lot of ways, what we're after is about a return to a kind of native intelligence. Because if you think about it, our environments have really always sustained us. The air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the food that we eat, sun, shelter, shade. <clears throat> and at some point, I think we, we lost that connectivity. We lost that sense of interdependence with our physical environments, whether indoor or out. We started building these boxes around ourselves to keep all of these things out. And in the process, we've ended up starving ourselves of a lot of the critical nutrients and supports that we need to lead our best and healthiest lives. And this is critically important to all of us today, because collectively as a society, we spend more than 90% of our time indoors. And we know that those spaces have a profound impact on our health, our productivity, and our well-being. In fact, according to the CDC, our physical and social environment, so where we sit and who we sit next to, has a greater impact on our state of health than our lifestyle, behaviors, than our access to medical care, and even our genetics combined. We view buildings and organizations as vehicles of public health, as agents for delivering public health benefits. And what we're finding more and more is that organizations like LinkedIn that embrace that culture of health and well-being find that the impacts on the community and on society have a far greater ripple, because some of the best places to impact people's behaviors at home is at work. And whereas green building has historically focused on efficiencies that can be discovered in that 10% or so, focused on um, operations, on utility spend, IWBI and WELL are targeting the other 90% that are wrapped up in your people. And I'll give you some examples of that in just a moment. The WELL certification really straddles interventions or what manifest as point earning opportunities across that which the building can do through design and operational interventions and that which the organization can do through programs, through policies, uh, through plans, through Im improved benefits and amenities. Uh, and these interventions, these point earning opportunities, they stretch across 10 what we call concepts, air quality, water quality, uh, nourishment uh, and, and uh, dining-related features, um, light, both uh, electric as well as natural, movement and physical fitness, uh, ergonomics, thermal comfort, sound and acoustics, materials health, 
mental health and well-being and community connectivity. We've basically looked at all of the different ways that research has told us that the built environment or organizational practices can improve upon human health and productivity-related outcomes, and we've translated those into interventions in the form of point earning opportunities. So everything that we do at IWBI is grounded in a body of research. We have a full uh, team of in-house professionals. We have an in-house ergonomist who I'm going to introduce you to because uh, she's here with us today and for the next couple of days. We've got in-house lighting designers, acoustics, um, acousticians, uh, nourishment uh, experts, community and mental health and well-being experts, and so forth, who are constantly scanning the literature, understanding what the research has, to, has demonstrated uh, to have an improvement on health and well-being, and then translating that into voluntary interventions within the standard. A lot changed for us with Well version 2. We launched the newest version of Well a year and change ago. It's been in pilot. It'll come out of pilot uh, later this year, but it's fully operational and fast becoming the dominant version of Well in the market. One of the most important changes that we made to Well was introducing what we call a dynamic scorecard. This allowed us to keep together those organizational interventions with those building and design related interventions through a kind of choose your own adventure. So if you're used to a system like LEAD, it's a fixed constellation of features. And with Well, there's an ever expanding library of interventions that are customized to different sectors, building types, and regions. And what you can do is build a customized scorecard that maps to what you can control and what you can influence. So if you're a capital improvement project, you're new construction, you might lean more heavily into design-related interventions. If you are an existing building, like we are in New York City, in a space that's more, a tenant space that's more than 100 years old, where you have very little input into fixtures and fittings, you can lean more into those organizational strategies. So it's build your own scorecard, choose your own adventure, and more and more what we're doing through our dedicated coaching context is we're helping people to overlay their public health data, whether it's at an organizational scale, a community scale, a zip code scale, on top of the well scorecard to choose the strategies that are gonna matter most. Another key differentiator of well certification is performance verification. That means that for every project that becomes well certified, they actually are visited by a third party testing agent who shows up with the um, best in technology to measure air quality, water quality, lighting, thermal comfort, acoustics, and do a series of spot checks. And this really helps you to have the confidence that the things that you are intending to do on the project have actually been achieved. Now, that might sound a little bit frightening, that performance-based approach, because you don't, pass the, uh, you don't pass the class unless you pass the final exam. Um, but what I can tell you is that no well-intentioned customer, pun intended, has ever failed to achieve well certification. And in fact, many of our customers report that they discovered things throughout that process that they probably never would have understood or encountered had it not been for their well certification. So for instance, recently I was talking to a property uh, developer in Los Angeles, they failed their air quality test two times. They couldn't figure out why. They finally traced it back to a bunch of pistons in the elevator shaft that were pumping unfiltered air into the lobby that was, in Los Angeles, severely compromising indoor air quality. So that's really what performance verification, like building commissioning, is designed to do. And increasingly, we want to introduce that as a new best practice for all Class A buildings. So um, from Dodge Analytics, these are the top benefits of healthy buildings that are reported uh, by property owners. Um, but I want to tell you a couple of stories um, where we see these things in action. Um, CBR Canada found that in their well-certified offices, employee turnover rate uh, had fallen by almost a third, and the hiring rate for new talent has doubled. Um, also, um, a report from the World Green Building Council concluded that Kundal, um, who has a new well gold certified office in London, um, has seen a savings of 200,000 pounds a year due to a reduction of, on average, four employee sick days per year. Um, and then finally, recently, two of our members of the standard development team, those in-house uh, experts, recently took a trip to Mexico City during our remote uh, pilot uh, program. So we um, told everybody at IWBI, go choose a place for, the, for a month during the summer that makes your heart sing and work remotely from that place. They went and visited a lot of our um, 
uh, of our employees visited while they were um, at all corners of the world, different well-certified projects and future well-certified projects. And our leads for the community and mind concepts were together in Mexico City. They went and visited what will be a future well-certified building site and found that a year prior to occupancy, that building is already 70% leased up. And they stood on that site and the owner pointed to all these buildings and future buildings and said that one's at 25% and that one's at 10% and our building's already at 70%. We've also um, heard reports uh, coming from different markets from here all the way to Australia and to Asia, which happens to be our largest market, um, of tenant spaces that are leasing up for as much as 20% above uh, average costs for tenant spaces in um, comparable buildings. The movement is alive and growing quickly. Uh, just last year, if I were standing on this stage with you, we would have been celebrating 150 million registered and certified square feet of well projects. This year, by the end of the year, we'll be at half a billion. Um, 58 countries are working with well certification or their projects working with well certification in those countries. And um, that's a typo. That um, 3,921 is about how many people are registered to take our exam. Uh, in fact, there are 5,239 currently accredited well professionals. So the community that's really championing well certified buildings around the world. IWBI, as a purpose-driven organization, recently signed on to the UN Sustainable Development Goals through the Global Compact. And one of the first exercises that we undertook was to map our well features to the Sustainable Development Goals, right down to the sub-goals. And we were kind of amazed at what we found. What we found was 100% alignment. So well features address every single one of the sustainable development goals, which to us signaled that for organizations that are aiming to make advancements in their sustainable development goal commitments, particularly those that are working with low income communities uh, and in developing countries, can actually be leveraging well as a framework for advancing their SDG commitments. And this has taken us on a real journey in discovering the value proposition of a program that was already in development in parallel called Well Portfolio. We just brought Well Portfolio out of pilot. Uh, and Well Portfolio is a program, as it sounds, that's designed to be applied across all of your assets, across all of your buildings or your spaces. Uh, and to reward you, to acknowledge you for your achievements along the way, um, to address the, the reality of how organizations make change across a large portfolio. Um, every year, you get a well portfolio score that get, gets published. There will be leaderboards, sector by sector, that allow for that drive of comparison and competition. But what surprised us the most about Well Portfolio is that organizations in many instances are signing on to it to leverage Well as a framework for improving upon their ESG scores and again advancing those sustainable development goal commitments. So we started out to create a program that would help our core customers to do more Well projects more quickly and more cheaply. And what we found was that we had created a new framework that doesn't assume that certification is the aspiration, that honors the journey even more than the destination that can be leveraged for much higher purpose within the modern organization. So this is a lengthy slide, but it gives you a sense of just how diverse um, the reasons are for why our customers choose to pursue well. Um, and that ranges from improving mental health management or introducing or growing that culture of health to reducing healthcare costs to improving the value of uh, real estate assets to increasing engagement and health and well-being among employees, reducing sick days, reducing turnover. The number one reason why I hear our customers say that they pursue well at a portfolio scale or at an individual building scale is for purposes of recruitment and, and retention. They want to recruit the best talent, and as you all are very familiar, that new generation of talent that we are trying to recruit into the workplace has a totally different idea of what constitutes a great job. It's no longer just about a good salary. It's no longer about healthcare benefits. Those things are expected, and now everybody wants to work at Google. Everybody wants to work at Facebook. Everybody wants to work at LinkedIn, where you've got, you know, uh, massage chairs and scooters and unlimited food, what Well is doing is really overlaying a scientific approach on top of uh, that drive for amenities and that desire that millennials have to have an organization that aligns with their values and supports them as a whole person. 
The other big surprise for us with Well Portfolio um, was the degree of popularity that it saw. During the pilot, we wanted three to five organizations to sign up. We charged $20,000 for a program you didn't know at the end of the day um, was going to work for you, and we got 36 instead. Um, you'll see that this tilts heavily toward property uh, managers and owners, but more and more higher education institutions, healthcare companies, manufacturers, um, uh, even the developers for the YMCA are signing up to this program. So I just want to close um, by introducing um, an easy way for you to think about getting involved, and that's through, by joining IWBI as a member. This is a new opportunity and offering for us, and here are some of the earliest folks to join the movement. We've also just recently announced uh, that we'll be hosting our first WELL conference uh, sometime in the spring. Um, brought to you by the folks who created GreenBuild, um, which grew into a 30,000-person conference. Our first uh, gig is going to be a little bit more intimate. If you're interested in learning more about membership or about the event or well in general, please find us. I'll be here for the rest of the day and tomorrow morning, and I'm going to ask Angela Spangler in the back um, from, our, uh, from, from our market development team to stand and raise her hand. Um, Angela came to us from Goldman Sachs. She was one of their full-time ergonomists, uh, and she now works on a host of different projects at IWBI. Um, she'll be around for the remainder of the conference as well. Please come and hit us up, and let's talk about how we can make well work for you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rachel.